China's rocket net system just hit a wall. They thought catching rockets with giant nets was genius, but SpaceX engineers found the fatal flaw. Here's the problem. Every landing burns holes through the nets, complete replacement after each catch. The cost, more than the rocket itself. But that's not even the worst part. Why can't the system ever work at sea? And what makes SpaceX's method unbeatable? The answer will shock you. Let's dive right in. Space transportation had what they thought was a breakthrough moment. While SpaceX burned through billions perfecting robotic arms, China said we'll do it cheaper. Eight steel columns, two layers of mesh, a motorized lifting system. The concept seemed flawless. The rocket descends, engines blazing, burns a perfect hole through the upper net, drops into the lower net like a gentle embrace. Simple, elegant, revolutionary. But there's something they didn't account for, something that would shatter their dreams completely. The devil, as always, lives in the details. A 100-ton rocket stage screaming earthward at terminal velocity. Engine exhaust reaching 3,000 degrees Celsius, hot enough to vaporize steel. This isn't just heat. This is a controlled explosion. Now picture that inferno hitting your specially engineered net. The upper layer doesn't burn cleanly. It disintegrates violently. Metal vapor contaminates everything. Toxic fumes, structural damage, complete system failure. But wait, it gets worse. The rocket still carries massive momentum when it hits the lower net. We're talking about a school bus traveling at highway speed, falling from the sky. Can a fishing net stop a freight train? That's exactly what China's attempting. The physics don't just disagree, they laugh at the concept. Each net replacement costs $2.3 million. Every single time. Compare that to SpaceX's Mechazilla arms, which have caught dozens of boosters without replacement. The economics are brutal. After just 10 launches, China's system costs more than building an entire SpaceX facility. The math is merciless. But the real shocker? Those eight steel columns need precision engineering to maintain perfect alignment, even millimeters of deviation, and the entire system fails catastrophically. Installation cost alone, $50 million per site. Meanwhile, SpaceX's robotic arms cost $100 million up front, but last for hundreds of catches. The economic case for nets just evaporated. But here's where China's plan truly falls apart. China's system works. Maybe you want it for small rockets. But what happens when you scale up to super heavy class boosters? The answer is terrifying. The net structure would need to be 300% larger. Steel columns anchored 50 feet deep. The entire system becomes a massive engineering nightmare that defies basic physics. SpaceX's Mechazilla scales beautifully. Bigger rocket, stronger arms, simple engineering logic. China's net system? It's like trying to catch a falling skyscraper with a spider web. The physics break down completely. And here's the kicker. China's space program is planning rockets even bigger than SpaceX's. How exactly do you catch a 200-ton booster with nets? The silence from Beijing speaks volumes. This is where China's system dies completely. SpaceX dominates the oceans with autonomous drone ships. They can launch from anywhere, land anywhere. Maximum flexibility, maximum opportunity. China's net system, landlocked forever. Those eight steel columns can't handle ocean waves. Salt corrosion destroys the precision mechanisms. The entire concept becomes worthless for maritime operations. But maritime recovery isn't optional in modern spaceflight. It's essential. Over 70% of optimal orbital trajectories require ocean-based recovery. China just locked themselves out of the most valuable launch corridors on Earth. Think about the strategic implications. While SpaceX expands globally with floating launch platforms, China is stuck building expensive towers on land. It's like choosing horses when everyone else drives cars. China isn't telling you about the control nightmare. The net system requires the rocket to maintain perfect attitude control while engines are firing. Any slight deviation, and the rocket crashes into steel columns. We're talking tolerances of less than one meter at hypersonic speeds. 
SpaceX's Mechazilla arms actively guide the rocket during capture. They compensate for wind, engine thrust variations, navigation errors. The net system, completely passive. Missed by a few feet, and you have a $200 million firework display. The fuel requirements alone kill the concept. The rocket needs extra propellant for precise maneuvering during final approach. That's payload capacity lost forever. Every kilogram of extra fuel is a kilogram less cargo to orbit. Here's the engineering paradox that destroys everything. The nets need to be strong enough to stop a falling rocket, but light enough to burn through cleanly. This creates an impossible contradiction. Make them too strong, and the rocket can't penetrate the upper net. Make them too weak, and they can't catch the rocket safely. Current materials science simply doesn't have a solution. Carbon fiber burns at high temperatures. Steel is too heavy and doesn't burn cleanly. Kevlar melts under extreme heat. There's literally no material that can do both jobs effectively. SpaceX solved this with active robotic systems. No materials paradox. No impossible engineering requirements. Just proven mechanical engineering that works every single time. Here's the number that should terrify China. SpaceX's Mechazilla system has a 98% success rate. Proven, reliable, battle-tested. China's net system, zero successful catches of actual rockets. Not one. Their only test was a small-scale prototype that barely functioned. In the rocket industry, reliability isn't optional. It's everything. One failed catch destroys a $200 million booster. Insurance companies won't cover unproven recovery systems. Launch customers won't risk their satellites on experimental technology. China is essentially asking the world to trust their space program to a system that has never worked at full scale. Would you fly on an airplane that had never successfully landed? While China struggles with net engineering, SpaceX is already moving to the next generation. Starship catches are becoming routine. Launch costs are plummeting. The gap widens every month. By the time China perfects their net system, if they ever do, SpaceX will be launching hundreds of missions annually. The competitive advantage will be insurmountable. China isn't just behind. They're moving in the wrong direction entirely. Every day they spend on nets is a day SpaceX extends their lead. This isn't just about rockets, it's about space dominance. China's net system represents a fundamental misunderstanding of modern spaceflight economics. While they chase novelty, SpaceX builds empire. Every failed Chinese recovery attempt strengthens SpaceX's market position. Every successful SpaceX mission proves their system's superiority. The net concept isn't just technically flawed, it's strategically catastrophic. China is essentially betting their space future on a system that can't scale, can't go to sea, and can't compete economically. Global space agencies are watching this unfold. They're making decisions about future partnerships based on proven reliability. SpaceX's track record speaks for itself. China's net system? It's a question mark that no one wants to bet on. Commercial satellite operators need certainty. They need systems that work. They need recovery methods that have been proven hundreds of times. China's nets offer none of that. The space economy is moving fast. There's no time for experimental systems that might work someday. The market demands results now. Every aspect of China's net system faces insurmountable challenges. The physics don't work. The economics don't work. The scalability doesn't work. The materials science doesn't exist. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to dominate with proven technology. They're not just ahead, they're accelerating away from the competition at light speed. China's net system isn't just doomed, it's already dead. They just haven't realized it yet. But here's the twist that changes everything. What if China knows something we don't? What if this entire net system is deliberate misdirection? What if they're playing a completely different game while the world focuses on their failed experiment? The real question isn't whether nets can catch rockets. The question is, what is China really building while everyone laughs at their nets? So here's the truth about China's net system. It's not just technically flawed, it's strategically impossible. The physics don't work. The economics don't work. The scalability doesn't exist. But maybe, just maybe, 
That's exactly what China wants us to think. While the world laughs at their failed nets, what are they really building in secret? SpaceX revealed why the nets are doomed, but did they just fall for the perfect distraction? The space race isn't over. It's just getting started, and the next move might surprise everyone. What do you think? Are China's nets really a failure or the perfect cover for something bigger? Drop your thoughts below, and if you want to stay ahead of the space game, hit that subscribe button, because the next revelation might change everything we thought we knew about the new space race. The universe is full of surprises. Are you ready for what's coming next? NASA just confirmed what SpaceX feared most. Dream Chaser isn't just another spacecraft. It's four times bigger than Dragon with 33 cubic meters of pressurized space. Here's what's crazy. Dragon crashes into salt water, damaging experiments. Dream Chaser lands on runways like a normal plane, keeping everything perfect. But why did NASA reject it before? The answer will shock you. They're now desperately trying to fix that mistake as Boeing fails and SpaceX gets too powerful. Could this be the end of Dragon's dominance? Let's dive right in. For years, SpaceX has owned the space cargo game. Dragon capsules launch like clockwork, deliver supplies to the International Space Station, and splash down in the ocean to thunderous applause. But there's a problem. Every single Dragon mission ends the same way. Violent impact with salt water, corrosion eating away at billion-dollar experiments, recovery teams racing against time before the capsule sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Remember what happened to Gus Grissom? His Liberty Bell 7 capsule sank because the hatch opened too early? That nightmare scenario haunts every Dragon recovery operation. Scientists lose months of work. Pharmaceutical companies watch their investments dissolve in salt water. Critical medical research, destroyed by the very system meant to protect it. NASA knew this was happening. They saw the damage reports. They watched experiments fail, but they stayed silent because they had no alternative. Until now. Deep in Sierra Nevada's facilities, engineers were building something different. Not just another spacecraft, but a complete revolution in how we think about space logistics. Dream Chaser doesn't look like Dragon. No rounded capsule. No parachutes, no ocean splashdown. Instead, it looks like a miniature space shuttle. Sleek wings, precision control. Built for one purpose, bringing cargo home safely. The numbers are staggering. Dragon offers 9.3 cubic meters of pressurized space. Dream Chaser delivers 33 cubic meters. That's not just bigger, it's four times the volume. But here's what makes this truly revolutionary. That extra space isn't wasted. It's specifically designed for the most delicate, most valuable cargo in the world. Protein crystals that could cure cancer. Medical research that saves lives. Scientific equipment worth more than most countries' GDP. And when it's time to come home, Dream Chaser doesn't crash into the ocean. It lands on runways like a commercial airliner. Smooth, controlled, perfect. No salt water, no corrosion, no damage, no delays. Scientists can walk up to the spacecraft within hours and retrieve their experiments in pristine condition. So if Dream Chaser is this superior, why isn't it flying already? January 2014. NASA faced the most important decision in modern spaceflight. Three companies, three different visions, one contract that would shape the future of American space exploration. Boeing presented Starliner, traditional capsule design, proven technology, safe bet. SpaceX offered Dragon, innovative but familiar, capsule-based, evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Sierra Nevada proposed Dream Chaser, completely different, winged spacecraft, space plane technology, the future, or a dangerous gamble. NASA's evaluation was brutal, every detail scrutinized, Every risk analyzed, every possibility examined, Dream Chaser scored well on mission capability. Sierra Nevada had impressive past performance. The technology was brilliant, but NASA said no. The official reasons sounded technical. 
schedule risks, system complexity, development challenges, standard bureaucratic language that revealed nothing about the real decision. The unofficial reason? Pure terror. January 28, 1986. Challenger exploded 73 seconds after launch. Seven astronauts died instantly. The nation watched in horror as their heroes disintegrated in the sky. February 1, 2003. Columbia broke apart during re-entry. Seven more lives lost. Families destroyed. Dreams shattered. Both disasters involved winged spacecraft. Both were spaceplanes. Both left scars that never healed.